Uh, this session is meant to discuss about analytic functions. So we'll start by defining what we mean by an analytic function, and then give a step without proof, necessary and sufficient condition for function f of z to be analytic. And if time will allow, we'll do an example to show a function that is analytic. So function f of z is said to be analytic. at a point Z not if F is differentiable not only at Z not but at every point of some neighborhood of this point <coughs> Z not. So this is what we call or what the definition of what you mean by an analytic function. And then next, a function f of z is analytic in a domain if it is analytic at every point of the domain. Then next, the point at which the function is not analytic. Okay, the function is not differentiable. It's called a singular point of the function. We have synonyms for analytic functions. So an analytic function is also known as holomorphic or regular or monogenic.
all these are synonyms. Next point. A function which is analytic everywhere thus we mean for all z in the complex plane is known as an entire function. So an entire function is a function that's analytic everywhere, a complex plane. So necessary condition for a function f of z to be analytic. This theorem so the necessary conditions for f of z to be analytic. at all the points in a region are, are one, partial u, partial x equals to partial v, partial y, number two, partial u, partial y, equals to negative partial v, partial x. These are what we call the cauchy Riemann's equations, the series, provided partial u, partial x, partial u, partial y, partial v, partial x, partial v, partial y exists. So that is the necessary condition for f of z to be analytic that the function, I remember uh, f of z itself is given by u plus iv and u is a function of x and y, also v is a function of x and y. Now, the sufficient condition The sufficient condition for f of z to be analytic or conditions are f of z given by u plus iv, actually u is a function of x and y, 
also v is a function of x and y to be analytic. at all the points in a region R, R, the first one, partial U, partial X, should be equals to partial B, partial Y. Second, partial u, partial y, partial u, partial y equals to negative partial b, partial x. And then partial u, partial x, partial u, partial y, partial v, partial x, and partial v, partial y should be continuous. functions of x and y in region R. So that's the sufficient condition. So a quick example. Show that W equals to F of Z equals to E raised power Z is analytic in the complex plane. So uh, this is how we are going to solve this. So let Z be X plus I, Y is by definition. So this follows that F of Z, which is equals to E raised power Z is given by E raised power X plus I, Y. which is e raised power x, e raised power y, i. But we know that e raised power theta i is cos of theta plus i sine theta. This Euler's identity. So then it means that f of z, which is e raised power z, is e raised power x into cos y plus i sine y, making use of the Euler's identity. Now, this follows that f of z is nothing but e raised power x cos of y plus e raised power x sine of y and then times i. And if you relate this one to f of z equals to u of x, y, plus b of x, y, i, then it follows that u of x, y is nothing but e raised power x cos y, and v of x, y is e raised power x sine of y. Now, we need to show that uh, this u and v satisfy the Cauchy-Riemann's equations. So, partial u, partial x. When you differentiate this with respect to x, you get e raised power x cos of y. Partial u, partial y. When you differentiate this with respect to y, you get negative e raised power x 
sine of y. Now partial v, partial x will give you e raised power x sine of y. Partial v, partial y will be negative, uh, positive e raised power x cosine of y. Now from this clearly, partial u, <coughs> partial x, which is e raised power x cos y, is the same as partial v, partial y. So that's the first condition for Cauchy Raymond. And then partial u partial y, which is negative, e raised power x sine of y is the same as negative partial v partial x. Because if you multiply this one by negative, then you get the same thing. So since partial u partial x equals to partial v partial y and partial u partial y equals to negative partial v partial x and also u which is e raised power x cos y and v which is e raised power x sine y are both continuous in the complex plane then f of z equals to e raised power z is analytic in the whole complex plane. So that is how we show that. Next session we give more examples on analytic functions. Thank you.